Hey dudes and dudettes, this is Lex from What The Craft, and today's tutorial is this slouchy hobo bag with leather details. You can use faux leather, which I have done, or vinyl, anything like that. I am putting up an additional tutorial that goes along with this that has some tips and tricks with working with fabrics like vinyl and faux leather because they can be a little bit tricky. Don't forget to go to my website to download the free pattern for the bag. It includes all the little extra bits, including this crossbody strap, which is super awesome and makes the bag a lot more adaptable. Let's get started. Our first step, cut out your pieces. I know some people like to make a test bag first, so if you want to go totally bare bones, you can get away with two outer bag pieces and two lining pieces. But for the official bag, we need two pieces of bottom trim for the outer bag. You'll also need a handle piece, and then the hardware, a snap for the closure, and then three more snaps for the handle, or alternately you could use Velcro. Now I am adding an optional cross body strap and for that you will need the additional strap pieces and also two D-rings and two swivel clasps. Also optional, pockets. I'm doing one pocket and then you need one zipper for each pocket. Okay, I am demonstrating with one of my lining pieces here. See, for the outside of my bag, I'm working with upcycled materials. They're a little wonky. I don't want to confuse you if my pieces don't look like your pieces. So pretend for a moment this luscious green fabric is one of my outer bag pieces. Feel free to add some interfacing to your outer and lining bag pieces. Mine is just heavy enough that I'm skipping it. I'd suggest a lightweight interfacing since the vinyl gives pretty good structure to the bottom and the top you kind of want a little floppy because it is, after all, a hobo bag. Note that I have not cut the gussets out of the vinyl. That's because I want it to line up perfectly with the piece it's sewn to. Match up the wrong side of the bottom trim with the right side of the bottom of the outer bag piece. If you're using faux leather, pins are a no-no. Once you put a hole in, it's there for life. So on the edges, I'm gonna use clips. These wonder clips are a very handy tool. If you don't have wonder clips, you could use binder clips or clothes pins. On the edge or top stitching, I'm going to use masking tape, top stitch along the top edge for both bag pieces. Once you've attached the trim, set the outer bag pieces aside. Now we're going to focus on the lining and the zipper pockets. Again, my green fabric is now magically transformed back into my lining. Any piece that will have a pocket should be marked like so. And the pocket should be marked like this. Mine is marked with a piece of tape so you can actually see it. You can just use a standard fabric marker or chalk if your fabric more readily takes marks. The pocket piece should be pinned to the lining, right sides together. Then a rectangle sewn where you've marked on the pocket. Because the stitches on mine are so hard to see, this is what you want it to look like. After sewing, cut down the center of the rectangle and then to each corner, just to the stitches but not through them. If I flip the bag to the other side, I can show you what the cut lines should look like a little better. Now it's time to turn the pocket, which means you'll shove it through the opening we just cut. Then we'll have to finagle and press to get it to lay right. Pay special attention to the corners and the short edges. Press with an iron. Once our pocket is pressed and laying the way we want it to, Line up the zipper underneath the slit and fix it in place with a glue stick, masking tape or pins, whatever you want to use. Top stitch around the zipper, making sure not to sew through the end of the zipper teeth. The way I usually do that is I sew right up to the teeth, I lift the needle and the presser foot, hop over the teeth, put the needle back down, presser foot back down, and keep on sewing. Trim off any excess zipper. Fold the bottom of the pocket up to meet the top edge and pin. Make sure you're pinning just through the pocket layers, not through the lining of the bag. Sew using a half inch seam allowance. Once you've got all your lining pieces pocketed up to your liking, pin the two lining pieces together right sides together, and sew along the sides and bottom. 
After that, align the gussets, pin, and sew them closed. Repeat this process for the outer bag pieces. Right sides together. You can see here what I was talking about when I said my outer pieces are a little wonky. These are actually napkins, but I thought they were too pretty to wipe spaghetti sauce on. Sew along the sides and bottom using a half inch seam allowance. After that, align the gussets and sew them closed. Okay, I'm about to do something dumb, which is that I'm going to put the lining and the outer bag pieces right sides together, and I'm gonna sew up the straps. I'm gonna leave the ends open, and I'll use that opening to turn the bag out. Don't be dumb like me. If you don't have any faux leather on your bag, you'd probably be okay going that route, but in my case, I need a much bigger opening in a much more convenient place. It took me like 20 minutes to turn this bag right sides out without ripping anything. So pin the straps and sew using a half inch seam allowance, but leave a three to four inch gap on one side and make your life easier than I made mine. Using your sweet little gap, turn the bag right sides out. I'll meet you there in 20. Now we're going to press the outer edge of the bag, paying special attention to the gap you may or may not have. Turn the edges of just one of the strap ends in about one quarter of an inch as well. Pin and top stitch. That strap end we just turned in should not be stitched close. Not so fast, my friend. the strap we did not turn in, the one with the raw edge, insert that into the turned under strap, pin and top stitch closed. Note that the edges aren't perfect because of where we top stitched along the outer edges. That's okay. Our snazzy handle will cover it. Speak of the devil. Here is our handle piece. Fold in the sides, half an inch, clip or tape in place, and top stitch. Remember to leave long thread tails so that you can knot them. And here's a cool trick that I'm mad I didn't learn when I was first tying my shoes. This is called a surgeon's knot. It's just like a regular square knot, but you loop twice instead of once. And then, like magic, the knot just stays. Do this twice and you've got a pretty decent knot. This is super handy if you make jewelry or tie a lot of ribbon on presents. Once the knot is tied, Use a big blunt end needle to pull the thread tails down into the seam and through the stitches, and then clip whatever's left. Now we'll fold down the top edge, half an inch again, clip and stitch. Take care of your thread ends just like before. Now it's snap time. I find it's easier to start in the center, and I like to do the decorative side first, the side that will show when we're finished. I provided guide marks for the snaps on the pattern piece, but you should make sure that your particular snaps don't need to be situated a little differently. I have a separate video dedicated to my favorite snap tool, the Snap Source Snap Setter, so I won't get into great detail about that here. And on the topic of snaps, our last and final step, unless you're adding a cross body strap along with me, is to attach the snap closure. Once that's done, this bag is ready to rock. We wrap our handle around the top of the bag, snap it in place, and blammo. You've got a pretty snazzy bag already, but I'm about to get extra on your ass. Prepare for the cross body strap attack. If your fabric is particularly lightweight, you might want to add some interfacing here. Mine is, again, just heavy enough that I'm going to skip it. Fold it in half once, hot dog style, and press. Using that fold line as a guide, Fold the raw edges in to meet. Press again. Fold the whole shebang together. And if you are nice and precise with all that folding and pressing, the edges should meet up perfectly. Press yet again for old time's sake. Pin the open end and stitch about 1 8 of an inch from the edge. When you're done, you have the beginnings of a nice sturdy strap. Now we'll address the vinyl tab ends and the swivel clasps. 
First, we need to get the clasp on the vinyl. I did the genius thing and bought clasps with very small openings at the end, which means I have to roll my vinyl into a little tube to get the clasp in place. Not ideal, but it works. Once you have the clasp in place, I'm going to add a little reinforcement. This is a piece of regular old satin ribbon. If I'd had some thin nylon cording or grosgrain ribbon, I might have used that instead, but I had the satin and went with it. Basically, this will ensure that the leather or vinyl itself is not bearing the entire brunt of the strap wear and tear. For all I know, it might be fine without this extra bit, but better safe than sorry. I've got it taped in place, and I'm going to leave a tape there since you won't be able to see it at all once this is done. Place one raw end of the strap so it's sandwiched between the folded layers of the leather tab and clip it in place. Now remember, we don't want to backstitch through the leather. So what I've done is backstitched on the regular fabric portion of the strap, then sewn around the leather until I get to the other side of the fabric where I backstitch again. Now I'll go back and stitch a big X to keep this all a little more secure. Also, it looks snazzy. Again, no back stitching. This time I've left nice long thread tails so we can tie them off. We'll pull them to one side, just give one of the threads a tug, and you should see the other side pull through in a loop. Use a needle or the pointy part of a seam ripper to pull it so both threads are on one side. Then we just proceed with our surgeon's knot, just like before. The problem here is that we can't really pull this into a seam to conceal it, but we can weave it into the stitches. You just go around and around, weaving those ends in. Give it a good two inches or so, and then we should be good. Alternately, you could try a teeny tiny dab of glue on the knot to keep it from unraveling. I would use something permanent like beading glue or fabric glue. Strap, done. If you've got any uneven edges like this, feel free to trim it up. A rotary works wonders. Now, on to our D-ring tabs. Again, I'd recommend adding a little reinforcement under the D-ring and then fold everything in place. And I've removed the handle of the bag so I can open everything up easier when it comes time to sew. I've pinned, or rather taped, mine in place according to the marks on the pattern. The same way we sew the tabs on the end of the strap, where we backstitch on the fabric but not the leather, that's exactly what I've done here. Here is the finished top stitching. Again, instead of backstitching, I've left long thread tails that I'd pull through to the wrong side. Knot those up using our handy surgeon's knot. And in this case, since they're on the inside of the bag and not visible, I'm just gonna trim them up with shears. Hot diggity dog. We can attach our sweet strap to our bag now and marvel at our mad skills. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and for more tips, tricks, and kick-ass sewing patterns, visit whatthecraft.com.